spark plug? Did you drop it? It looks fine. Did you drop the spark plug? I dropped the spark plug. Did you check it before you put it I'm in? I'm currently checking it. Right, but not before you put it in. Did you drop any? We're back on Project Jigsaw, which is our vintage supercar that we're building based off of 1960s legends like the GT40, Lamborghini Miura, and more. We started with a Boxster chassis, installed a Mustang 5 liter engine, and now we've got it far enough along that we really want to get it running and drive this thing around. Uh, we've got some ignition parts coming along. We can get those done. Ryan, you're going to make some block off plates. Heck and yeah. And a coolant neck for our electric water pump. Why are you talking like that? It's my YouTube voice. <laughs> Quick, watch a different video now. We're going to deal with this entire next 20 minutes. It's like you. Yeah, kind of. Mm, what a beautiful plate. That was one of the nicest things Porsche ever did on one of these cars. Ryan, remember when you took that water pump off? Yeah, what about it? Well, now we need to put, we need something to pump the water. I know, so the plan here is to make a plate to block this off, but you'll notice, you know, it's where a water pump goes, so there's an inlet and an outlet for the coolant. So we need to actually have a neck on that as well to uh, go to a remote pump. Electric water pump. Yeah. You want sweet about that, Tony? It looks like a turbo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's also sweet about that, Tony? You don't need a thermostat. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. There's an electronic controller on these, so you don't really need a thermostat, which saves us even more work. Yeah, super high tech. Like us. Yeah. Well, me. So the water would come in through the neck here, and then go into the engine block in these two supports. Then up above here, we have the thermostat. Well, had. And up through the heads, then back out to the thermostat right here. So I guess our plan here is we need to make two ports to go on to the front of the block that our electric water pump can then pump into. Yeah. So we'll get that to pump into here and come back out there with another port. So really two block off plates with elbows and stuff. Yeah, something like that. Why don't we just buy an electric water pump and put it on there? Because Tony will make it fit. <laughs> because the electric Wait. water pumps can stick out to here for some reason. Yeah, because yeah. they're we like, look, oh, we we're going to it, and the, the electric water pump will come to here. I don't which understand. Isn't it impossible? I mean, if we wanted a water pump between the seats, we could do it. <laughs> but I don't know why I just we don't, want that. Yeah, I just don't like that. Other than it would be easy. Well, yeah, other than it would be easier because we wouldn't have to make this. But then, of course, we got to make something that will house that. We're fabricating either way, let's fabricate that. All right, so to make that plate, it's time to bust out the... It's Tony's turn. So to assist with making that plate and other stuff in the shop, Eastwood sent us their new plasma CNC table. So I think it's time to put that together to see what it could do. But before we can do anything, there's a mess to clean up. Send me hate mail. Oh man! Look at these packing peanuts! There's the instructions. Should I actually use the instructions for this one? I feel like it's a little complicated, so I probably should. Oh, it's a little stuck here, so. This is water. I assume I don't need quite yet, but I'll just uh, put it here. There it is. 
was fast. Manual move. Yeah, we're gonna need a lot more than that. After them. Check it out. It's together. And full of the juice. Let's see if it works. You've seen me use the arc droid a bunch in the channel. This is a lot bigger and it's a little different, so there's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve to it, but we got this. So this is the old water pump. Um, there's a block, like a block off, uh, I don't even call it a block off plate, like an adapter plate in the back side of it here. Um, since I don't have a gasket to scan, I'm gonna pull this plate off, throw it in the scanner so I can do some CAD work around it, save some time. All right, so a little pro tip. If you have a uh, two-dimensional thing you need to model and CAD, just set it in your scanner in the office next to a ruler for scale. So you have a, uh, greatly fits in here. So you have something to scale off of. Now I gotta scan and I can scale it using the ruler beside it. It's a win-win right there. Now I can import it into Fusion. Now what I can do here is calibrate the canvas to make it the size I need it to be to match the ruler. Then we'll be good to go. There we go. That should do it. So if we're going to start this engine, we're going to need fuel, we're going to need ignition, starting with fuel. Going to figure out what size fittings are on the car so that we can put together some fuel lines that will run to the carburetor. Um, I've got a fuel <coughs> injection pressure gauge kit and one of these fittings will fit into this and we can use that to match it up. There's other ways to do it, but this is easy. There we go. All right, so we need one of these. For this one, I'm gonna go over, pull the fuel line off the engine that we took out of this, because it's got the other fitting that I need, match up to that, and use that to plumb into this. When we took the engine out, we just used a little quick disconnect. We're going to hook this back up to the car, and we're gonna use this fitting to tie in. So, number one, we need this fuel hose do that with and number two I need to confirm the size of this fitting here so back to our master fuel injection kit that's the fitting we used over there and looks like it's the same size km which is a 14 millimeter, the CIS. So we'll get some fittings and adapt that to AN, and then, you know, all the AN race stuff after that. All right, so we know the size of the fittings that we need for our adapters. I've got this fuel line here, I'm gonna clip onto there. The plan for this fuel system is to use the existing high pressure in-tank fuel pump that was in the Boxster. So we've also ordered a fuel pressure regulator that will regulate the pressure down to something that's, that is acceptable for carburetors. So I'm going to install the fuel line I took off of the engine down on here, which means crawling on the floor. And dumping a little bit of really nasty gas out onto the floor. Just clip into place which is why we like it. And it's way easier to adapt to this steel fitting with a, you know, an AN adapter than, than trying to do anything with that uh, fuel line with the quick release. The crossover tube.
So we did this really weird thing right here. You can see it has these like dark spots. Well, that's where I like, thought it should like double back on itself and like kind of like, squiggle around. I saw it in the, when I was cutting, which translated to like, these like two marks on the edge, which don't really affect the uh, function. Um, I don't really want to waste the material, so it'll probably be okay. If you look at the computer itself, it didn't have those. It's all smooth the whole way around. So I'm not really sure what happened there. I'll talk to the Eastwood rep. I mean, this is the first kind of done with a custom file, so I'm not really worried about it. We'll, uh, we'll figure that out. So upon further inspection, it looks like it uh, got some artifacts of curly cues in the cut. That's why I was scrubbing around. I'm gonna try turning smoothing on and see if that fixes it. That is much better. It's a little bit of a learning process to go from that to that. Nice. It's the first snafu and it's not even that bad. I'll take it. Anytime you're starting a car that hasn't been started in a long time, there's a list of things that we always go through. In this case, we're talking about a carbureted engine and so what often happens with a carburetor that's been sitting on an engine, not running for a long time, the fuel evaporates out of it, the floats drop all the way to the bottom, and then the residual fuel that was still in there and, and other things, it just kind of gets stuck. So what happens is you get, you get it started or you try and get it started and all of a sudden gas is running everywhere, including down the intake and into the engine, bad all around. So sometimes you can get away with a, you know, a tap on the, the bowl um, and it'll unstick and, and, and work. We're gonna just avoid that altogether. We're just gonna pop the bowls off of each side, make sure the floats are moving well, make sure there's not a bunch of gunk sitting in the bottom. Um, we're not gonna take the whole carburetor apart. We're hoping it just kind of fires off, but we think we can, uh, the plan is to do that and at least make it smoother when we go to start this thing up. I removed the bowl from this end, took the gasket off, and it raised a couple of questions because there's nothing in this gasket kit that looks like what I just took off. I'm going to take off the other side and see if it is as symmetrical as I think it is because I've been told this is the right gasket kit. This gasket is, I think, like one that I have over there. So we'll continue on. That looks the same. That's good. Yeah, it's a good start. Well, we're in the middle, so it's not a start. Aha, I thought that these two gaskets in the gasket kit were the same, but they are not. You can see that not all the holes line up. So I'm thinking that maybe this is gonna work. Let's see here. So not that one, maybe. Ah, that was a Ryan squeal. Hang on, <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> no, I don't think, I don't think that's right either. So, she looks pretty good. Um, I gotta ring the holes a bit because the plasma cuts are like fully 90%, like 9%, 90 degrees square um, because of the curve or whatever. So. I'm gonna dremel out the holes, and in theory, should be able to bolt it in, because it's just ever so slightly off. I think it looks pretty cool. I do say so myself. So the original water pump was an open chamber, right? And it allowed the fluid or the coolant to go everywhere. Inside here it was all bathed, you know, because of the propeller, impellers here. Um, our version is only using the ends and it's just open void in the center. The gasket we got seals that. Now there are some challenges there. The main one is these inner bolt holes here on the engine block. The bolts or studs, whichever they are, are broken off inside there. And they also were not used in this design. Which I'm trying to figure out what all that means. Cause yeah. 
Ford things. Yeah, I, I, we don't it, know. It, it, the V8 so thing, I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, I'm not sure what was changed or whatever. Um, yeah. It's different, but I think yeah. what we'll do is we'll move forward, hoping that our big thick plate here will clamp down and, and yeah. crush this appropriately. Um, and if it doesn't, we'll go and do the, all the work. It'll just be unbolt this and yep. do all the work that we're hoping we don't have to do. Yeah, so we're gonna try to uh, work around it. I mean, at, at the end of the day, the engine will be coming back out and being rebuilt. So right. to deal with those bolts, those studs won't be a big deal outside the car. Inside the car sucks. Yep. Same right now, our goal is to get the car running and driving as it sits as a test mule kind of situation. Yep. So we'll put it together as is. Time? If we've got to adjust it later, that's the perfect time to adjust it. Less work now, it's a future us problem. Maybe, Yo, and maybe screw it's those not. guys. Yeah, and maybe maybe we don't have to deal with it at all. Uh -huh, so. uh -huh, uh -huh. All right, cool. So in the same vein as our water pump issue, the gasket, actually one of the gaskets um, just isn't lining up. It doesn't have all the same holes. Um, so I think we're gonna kind of follow the same thing that we did there, uh, <laughs> but a little bit different. We're just gonna reuse the old gaskets. They're not too bad and it is temporary. We're going to hope for the, yeah, we're gonna reuse the old gaskets and hope for the best. But we took all that apart, everything looked good, and we put it all back together with the old gaskets. So it feels like a big waste of time, and we're hoping that we're not further behind now because we probably wouldn't have had a leaking bowl, and now maybe we will. Why'd you do that? Maybe we will. Why did I do that? Um, you know, because like sometimes I like to walk backwards, and the best way to do that is to take uh, one step forward and two steps back. Yeah, I live that. It fits. So now that the plate's made and fitted up to the car, I need to make the Y piece that attaches these two to each other and then goes to a fitting so we can run it to our external water pump. This is the diagram of the water pump itself and it's showing that it has a 1.5 inch inlet and outlet for the outer diameter of tubing. So I'm gonna try to match that. I think what I'm gonna do is take this U-bend we have here, cut it in half. So those be the two 90s for the in, or the outlets that go into the block. And then I'm gonna tee into that. I'm gonna weld them together and tee into that with this bend, which is also the right diameter for the tubing that runs to the water pump. Will it be 100% efficient? No. Will it work? Probably. Oh, I, I can talk about oil all day long. You have no idea how much time I spent researching oil. <laughs> In this economy? What about coffee? We put the bowls back on the carburetor with the old gaskets. We got new gaskets coming just in case they leak when we go to fire it up. Another thing that you want to do when you're getting ready to start an engine that hasn't been run in a long time, I was running some time back in my head and I think it's been over 20 years since this engine was fired off. The oil's been in there that long. Um, it was in the ground longer, but it's been through a whole bunch of stuff since then. Um, so before we start it up, we want to have fresh oil in there, which means I got to get the old oil out. Yeah, this is black oil. I think that'll work for the flow between the two ports. So I'm going to weld those together and then uh, we'll put a little T into it and have it kind of curve this way because I want to go over to the passenger side of the car because that's where we're going to keep the pump, I believe. So I got this tube welded and ground down to fit. I think it'll fit pretty good around the bolt holes here on both sides. But before I make the T on the top, I wanna make sure it actually fits around the pulley, which I'm pretty sure it goes like about here. So I'm gonna, uh, I guess I'll just tack it on so it doesn't move. And then we'll slap it in the car quick and confirm everything. Yeah, it'll fit. There's a stud. I broke it off bolt in the engine. That's kind of in my way. Right here. That's actually 
<clears throat> it's not gonna stay there. It's gonna turn into a uh, bolt itself. But ignoring that, it will fit in here. So we'll have to have this come over this way. So we have this scrap laying around from the uh, Fister mods. We do the 996-997s. Uh, if you don't know what that is, you can look it up. Um, so it's the right diameter. It's already like kind of cut close to what it needed to be. The idea here is to just kind of tee it in, kind of like that. I'll clean up the cope there to make it a little bit better. Um, then we'll punch a hole into the tube that you hear. Um, and it's pretty much gonna be there. That's pretty much all we need to do. Dang. That's really good for just eyeballing it. It's plenty close enough for what I need. Sometimes you just gotta get a little creative. That'll work. If we're gonna start this, we're gonna need ignition. So we took the distributor out while we were fitting up the engine because we knew worst case scenario, we could come up with another ignition option and still get this engine in. We didn't want this to be in the way. We wanna try and get it started the way that it is. So we're gonna try and put this back in I'm a little concerned that even if this were in the car, in the engine, when we put it up in, it would be a tight clearance and I'm really not sure if I'm gonna be able to get it to fit, but we're gonna try and see what happens. So we are looking at about 20.5 centimeters. That will come to right about there. So no matter what, if we wanna use it, no matter what, if we want to use that distributor, it's going to have to come up to here. So now it's decision time. Do we cut a hole or figure out a completely different ignition system that we don't really want to install right now? So there's no way this is getting installed while the engine's in the car. And then we're going to see if this will fit when it was fully assembled because we know we got to take it loose to put the transmission adapter in anyway. All right, so this piece is cracked on the old distributor, so we got a new one. Um, but we went to put the cap on here and it just won't fit. And I thought, well, I wonder if it's the cap or this piece, but when you put this on here, I was like, oh, it goes right on. Well, that's cause this can expand. So it would seem that this cap does not quite fit, which might be what happened to this. Somebody ran into the same thing back in the day. <sighs> so I might need to get another cap. Assuming that the height is not also wrong. But, all right, now we got something to measure. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Why are you laughing? <laughs> well. What'd you do to my tape measure? <laughs> <laughs> when I was measuring for the clearance of the distributor, it kind of got caught and fell out of my hands. If we want to use it. It's a what? The, the bucket of oil? Yeah. And it's been sitting there for the last 30 minutes oh or an hour. Oh my god, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? I'm sorry. It's like the world's longest dipstick now. So the distributor is going to live about this high. Okay. So we have to, now would be a good time to decide whether or not we want to retain the distributor or move to something Well, what's like, our current goal? What's our current goal? Is, well, our current goal is to get the car running. As cheaply as possible. As cheaply as because possible. Because we're building Correct. this engine. Yes. We can't run it without a distributor. And yep. I'm sure we're probably gonna not keep a cap and rotor assembly for for the end product, right? I'm not sure. I, I, I mean, okay. I haven't really made that decision, so it's okay. possible we just leave a distributor in here. Um, I don't know. Cut a hole. What's that? Just cut a hole. We can weld it back shut later. If we decide not to use it. I think cutting a hole is probably going to be what we cut do. Cut a hole, but cut a hole, cut a I, I like to look before I leap, Ryan. I'm looking right now, and there's plenty of room to cut a hole there, so you can leap right <laughs> in. We're gonna put the distributor in. We need to know that the engine is at top dead center on cylinder one. 
we may have been a little antsy and by we i mean ryan when we were taking things apart so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we you know i'm sure the engine is not at that position now so i'm going to pull a spark plug um so i can confirm our the position of our engine when we put the distributor in i was thinking this is cylinder one because this is our spark plug that's broken but we're gonna have to pull two spark plugs we'll pull this one and replace our broken one and we'll pull that one and confirm that cylinder number one is at top dead center on the compression stroke there it is, <laughs> yeah, there it is. look at that we got our water pump to pump in right here and then it's going to spread the two parts in here and here to go in the block I just have a tacked on here right now. I'll weld it once I actually confirm it fits in that space. Tony said I can use the torch as long as I'm careful and judicious. Whatever the heck those two things mean. We need every step, even if it doesn't get used, but it, I mean. There it is. <laughs> Two hours later. The coolant pipes on this car at this end are about 40 millimeters, which is right about what we were figuring for on the neck on our electric water pump. Now, interestingly, six inches forward of that, it's like 32, 31. Um, so this was a base model Boxster, had a smaller engine, um, and the coolant pipes were also smaller. So, but Porsche was thinking ahead, I think, because the very end of it is the same size as their Boxster S coolant tubes. We will be using larger coolant tubes because big engine, we're gonna need bigger coolant pipes for the same reason Porsche did. Um, but for our temporary setup with the original radiators, this should hook up just fine to the setup that we're putting in. I gotta heat this up again, wow. That's already not hot. Yes! What a bastard. Look at that. Well, that is gonna work. So I got this all welded up now. We're fully sealed the whole way around. I don't see any issues. Um, we have good flow on the inside here as well. So I think the next step is to make sure that this is a nice flat plane so we can actually seal against the engine block. Now, like I said, we're only worried about sealing here and here. Um, so these two need to be exactly in the flat plane. This centerpiece doesn't matter at all. It's just for bolting and to hold our logo behind tubing you'll never see. So it's ground down now. The uh, surfaces that matter are flat and congruent to each other. So I think now we're ready to uh, mold her up to the car and see how she works. You know, once I get cooling on the car at some point. Gonna find top dead center so we can put this distributor back in. I like to put the uh, hose from the leak down detector into the number one spark plug hole so I can feel when there's air coming out. I know there's compression in that cylinder. So I got a ratchet on my crank pulley. I'm turning the crank over. And when I feel some air coming out of here, I'm going down through the spark plug hole. More. Just a hair. There you go. Yeah. Yep. All right. So we're at top dead center. So Yay! that is where we will in. Yeah. Now we can install the distributor and Set it firing at number one. Distributor, I barely know. Tony came through with some brand new bolts. Stupid standard hardware we don't have in stock. I'll let they hang out there for a second. Oop. All right, well. I know there's a thing that lines up on the thing. Oh, there it is. There we go. Ah. 
I'm not. I'm always concerned when it doesn't look like the part that came off. Because this goes on the outside and has a notch on the inside, and this is not that. I am so tired. <laughs> this rotor will work just fine. And this actually will fit on here, so that's a good sign. And now I'm speaking in rhyme. <laughs> so we got our access hole cut and we got our engine set to top dead center number one. We got our distributor set to about number one. So we're going to attempt, ah, let's see here. There we go, there's another Ryan squeal. I don't know what's up with me. Get that in, ooh, that looks like that went a little too far. We're gonna go back a tooth. I think that will get us real close. Okay, so the magneto is lined up here with the ring. Let me put the rotor on. It's pointed right there. Put the cap on. That's pointed at number one. So when we fire it up, the timing should be close, which is makes it a lot easier when you're trying to fire it up. Ooh, they're blue. Yeah. That's convenient because I printed blue things for it too. Right, and it's a Ford, so, you know, blue is their color, even it's though these aren't, these aren't Motocraft wires. Um, With the SDI wires. Right. Now, this is gonna be fun because there was no cap and rotor and, well, there was a, yeah, there was no cap and wires on it. And, you know, usually if you haven't done them before, you just, mark and you're careful and do one at a time um so we can't do that uh but fortunately we're just really good <laughs> i say that before we started and have problems but um yeah so i've got to try and guess at which length wire goes to which cylinder and all that sort of thing that's neat what's wrong they're different colors yeah you don't like different colored spark plugs no hey all right so i'm gonna try and guess our lengths of wires and get them all routed to the right place. Yeah, so what I like to do is just sort them by length and then, you know, follow common sense, getting from A to B and C to D and E to F, all the way around the engine. Spark plug? Did you drop it? It looks fine. Did you drop the spark plug? I dropped the spark plug. Did you check it before you put it I'm in? I'm currently checking it. Right, but not before you put it in. Did you drop any other spark plugs? I'm just gonna take this one out because, um, no reason. <laughs> Definitely not because I dropped this one too. This is what we got. Six and two are the next. Which one's gonna be longest? You just gotta make guesses. Your spark plug wires look like the wiring in yeah, the Yeah, because you gave me the, the redhead step trial the wires that are like question marks if they're, they're the right length or not. They're like, look, look how extra long these are. Like, you can jump rope with that. I'm super stoked that we're actually working towards getting this thing running and mm -hmm. we made good progress. We've got more parts on the way so we can get it fuel spark, something that'll keep it cool enough. And, and make the wheels spin because we don't have anything between the engine and transmission right now. And there's a big change coming there as well. So, Big change. Yeah, see you guys next week. Thanks for watching. That's kind of boring. Let's talk about metal shaping instead. Now we're talking. <laughs> Let's talk about the way welds shrink. I don't talk like that at all. <laughs> what do I think I do? Smoke Let's talk packs? about the way welds shrink! <laughs>